Growing your business can mean big time logistical questions, like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then, drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com. In Nebraska, an elderly man is killed and his wife injured after a brutal attack at a rust area. In Las Vegas, a police detective is found guilty of murdering her her daughter's ex-boyfriend and a suspect in a cold case gets life in prison for stabbing a man on the toilet. These stories and more coming at you today, Thursday, June 27th, on Real Life Real Crime Daily, and I'm Jim Chapman. I'm Woody Overton. Thirsty Thursday. It is Thirsty Thursday. Not for me. Not for you. <laughs> well, you might drink some water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay drink for some Thursday. Water and milk or something, right? That's it. And the... Uh, yeah, hot as hell and uh, coming to the end of June, Jim Chapman. Yeah, I know it, man. Summer's like halfway over. It's going to be a hot one this year. Yeah. That's yeah. the only thing I can figure. When do you kids go back to LSU? Uh, it'd be end Third. of September. Really? Yeah. That long? Yeah. Or it, yeah. I, I thought they went back it's like, like 20, in August. 20, shoot, it might be August. No, it's got to be August. My wife's probably listening right now and saying, no, 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 no. I think it's like the third week of August because that, um, the first LSU football game is the last week of August. Yeah, and, I guess. And they'll be back. I guess by. that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, they'd be back by then. So, it's, that shows what, what daddy knows. What they doing? Hanging out, summer working? or uh, They're all working. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. working like crazy. That's uh, good. None Which is good. It, right? Uh, she used to work at it. That's it. And my kids were at the house this past weekend, and um, they were like, when can we take another family vacation? I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm pretty sure you all have jobs now and graduated from college. You better figure this shit out on your own. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so we're back for another Real Life Real Crime Daily show, and let's get down to some true crime time for Thirsty Thirsty. And we're going to start off in Hall County, Nebraska, and a 22-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder and other charges after he fatally stabbed a 72-year-old man and injured his 71-year-old wife at a rest area. Deputies responded to a disturbance call at that rest area on Interstate 80, and when they arrived, they found two victims suffering from knife wounds. Medics transported them to a nearby hospital where, sadly, the man, Gary Weaver, died from his injuries. His wife, Mary Weaver, remained in critical condition. The sheriff's department said they believe the suspect, James Thompson Jr., attempted to rob the couple when he stabbed them. Thompson's fled in a car following the incident and engaged in a pursuit with the Nebraska State Patrol. He was apprehended and arrested on charges of first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and a slew of other charges. Uh, Gary and Mary Weaver were from Eureka, Missouri, and had been traveling in their mobile home when they got stabbed. Uh, Thompson is in custody at the Hall County Jail. So essentially, these people were just at a rest area in their RV. Yeah. And uh, this guy decided that would be a good idea to, to try to rob them. Yeah. And yeah. Kill, killed this man who had lived his whole life probably to retire. Right. And, and uh, the, damn near killed his wife. And they're living their dream, traveling the country in their RV. Yeah. I, I guess you would think that from a criminal standpoint, you look at an RV. First of all, RVs aren't cheap, right? Right. And then you, yeah, you're thinking, mm, they got all their shit with them. The, yeah. The good shit. And, yeah. And, but yeah, stabbings is just so fucking bad. But, uh, you got to be uh, careful at rust areas, too. Yeah. I mean, some of them, I, I know. Uh, I think it's Florida has has police there twenty four seven security. States, a lot of states do. Um, Louisiana does not. Louisiana. Let's talk about that. The I twelve that runs through Livingston Parish. Way back in the day, like in two thousand, that was one of the only details we had with the sheriff's office was to provide security for. The, with, I think there were like three rest areas. No, there was one and one. They were, they were on both sides of the interstate, mm-hmm. and and you know you, you kept you went back and forth all night long. Uh, uh, I never got to work. You had to be in the in the end click. That's my first start. <laughs> I went from the LP. Was that like the yeah. sweet job? Yeah, that was like the job, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, 
But you know, the rest areas are hotbeds for for prostitution and and you know everything else. The uh, robbery, a lot yeah. of the the like talk about in the episode glory hole. Um, there's a lot of that shit goes on. A and, lot of and, tapping of the feet, right? Yeah, yeah you'll learn about feet. tapping of the feet listening yeah, to that but, episode. Yeah, just craziness. And but uh, you know, I driving back and forth to Wisconsin. That's six states I go through in one day, and most of them have. Um, 24 hour security. I think as they should. And man. I mean, yeah, that's just, it serves as a deterrent, I guess, where it's a deterrent. But I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't ever stop at them. If I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop where they got a gas pump. You know, in yeah. Florida, a lot of the rest areas, like in South Florida around Miami and shit, yeah. on the interstate, you pull in, it's like a whole community, like with gas stations and shit like that. But it's mm. called a rest area. Yeah, and it, well, even heading to the beach and at the Panhandle of Florida. I mean, they have one of the best. I love stopping at the last Alabama exit, yeah. the last exit before you leave Alabama, that rust area, yeah. and then the one welcoming you to Florida you is that, a fine rust You get area. that glass of orange juice. Yeah, I used to, when I was hey, a kid, it's it, free. I want it. Free, free Florida yeah. orange juice. Yeah. yeah, it's a rest area. So, um, I do have to try to gotta, find, gotta be try careful. To find a Bucky's myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bucky's. Well, I've always, uh, you know, when we go on trips, we'd always stop at, at rest areas. We'd never yeah. stopped at right. it. Most of them are pretty nice. Yeah, but, especially uh, like the welcome centers yeah. on state lines. 100%. <laughs> so, um, you know, between here and Houston, they have a lot of rest areas. And but let me tell you about this crazy ass case out of Houston. So, um, there was a man who stabbed another man to death while he was sitting on the toilet at a um, in in his West Houston apartment, right? Mm. So, in this, they finally caught. This was a cold case, y'all. But let me just read it to you. So, a guy named Raymond Lincoln was sentenced to life in prison by a Harris County judge in Houston Wednesday for the stabbing and death of Eric Shears. Now, Shears was found dead with multiple stab wounds inside his apartment uh, in January of 2013. And guess what? DNA got him again, Jim. For 10 years, the case went cold until DNA evidence connected Lincoln to the crime, and he was charged in April of 2023. Now, Shears had told his family he was bisexual, and his uncle Curtis Anderson knew about the man accused of his murder, getting involved in his life. From what, what he told me about this guy and him meeting this guy, I told him I wouldn't mess with that type of guy. And this is what Anderson said in 2023. He was telling me about this dude, and he's already telling me this dude was trying to boss him around. <laughs> well, after family members hadn't heard from Shears for a few days, Anderson went to his West Houston apartment on Fountain View Drive and made the gruesome discovery. When the door flew open, I looked down, and I see blood on the floor, Anderson said. He was lying in the tub, crossways in the tub. I seen his feet first. Um, I thought that he fell off the toilet. Shears was in the early stages of decomposition, dead in his own apartment, but no one was held responsible. Mm. That was until 2023 when homicide detectives with the Houston Police Department reviewed the case and found the DNA evidence linking Lincoln linking Lincoln to the murder. Now, in addition, in addition to messages found between the men implying a relationship, Lincoln may have been staying with Shears for some period of time, according to a source close to the investigation. Lincoln allegedly claimed unwanted sexual advances, which led to a fight and struggle over a knife. Uh, I don't know how you do that when you sit on the toilet, but the circumstances of the 2013 murder are extremely similar to those of a 1992 murder for which Lincoln was convicted. So now he's a frequent flyer, right? Yeah. The victim in that case was also a male, and Lincoln also claimed unwanted sexual advances. Mm. Modus operandi. While Lincoln was in jail for unrelated charges of ag assault, Houston PD said in the news release that homicide detectives interviewed him about Shearer's death, and he admitted to being involved. And that's mm -hmm. where he, he claimed the, uh, you know, that 
he had the unwanted sexual advances. What's the same yeah. thing he claimed in the 1992 or 93 murder? Right. And then just stabbed a dude to death multiple times while he's sitting on the top. Yeah, that ain't how you want to go. Yeah, he's, he's, he's dying in prison in, in Texas. You know, a lot of prisoners, uh, when they use the toilet, they take one pant leg yeah, in and one fight. pant leg out. So they can fight. So they can fight because they don't want to end up dead on the toilet right? either. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you got – I am, we talked about this last week. That cold case, that six foot seven guy, and they said not a cold case, but they said it was a, a um, suicide, mm -hmm. and he was found halfway in, uh, halfway out the bathroom door with his pants around his ankles, yeah. and, and the gun was found in his bedroom. Yeah, like I don't know how you do that. Away. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go to Las Vegas. Las Vegas. And we're going to tell you about a former Las Vegas Metro Police Department officer. She was convicted this past week of killing her ex-son-in-law during a custodial visit. This was in 2019. Look, a lot of emotions the in those custodial involved. visits, yeah. right? A jury found Pamela Bordo guilty of murder with the use of a de deadly weapon in connection with the death of Sean Babbitt. She will be sentenced uh, August 20th. Bordeaux could face a range of sentences, including 20 to 50 years life without parole or even 20 years to life in prison. On April 22nd of 2019, Babbitt had scheduled an approved visit with the child uh, he shared with Bordeaux's daughter. Bordeaux and Babbitt reportedly got into an argument while the daughter and child were upstairs and she shot him, but get ready for this. She shot him at least 10 times. What? Yep. That's a little overkill. Uh, Bordeaux's attorneys argue Babbitt should not have been allowed around her family because they believed he was dangerous. A forensic psychologist testified at Bordeaux's trial and said Mr. Babbitt's impulsive behavior, addiction to extreme pornography, and inadequate therapy significantly contributed to his propensity for violence. Mm. The perception of imminent danger felt by Miss Bordeaux is consistent with the evidence of Mr. Babbitt's escalating and volatile behavior. Babbitt reportedly wrote a letter that said, I am an unfit parent, and Bordeaux became upset when Babbitt sought changes to his original custody arrangement. Bordeaux's daughter had full custody of the child, and he was allowed visits for one hour per week. Bordeaux uh, had been with the Las Vegas Metro Police Department for 23 years wow. and served four years in the Army. Wow. And then I hate to see her throw her whole life away. Right, over that, man. The, and ten times. Ten times. She was pissed. That's a lot. That is uh, yeah. emotional killing right yeah. there. Yeah, and then... Yeah, you know, the one, one hour a week point. visitation that tells you something right there. Yep. Uh, the so, but I, I don't know about this whole. And he was probably thing. seeking, you know, yeah. partial custody or something, yeah. and uh, trying well, to amend that one hour. Man, those uh, custody uh, things can get really emotional, it, and so, apparently she lost it. Yep. Well, she did it, and now she's got to pay for it. And that, uh, <sighs> Craziness. 23 years that's a long time man that's, that's a that's a lifetime as yeah. an adult um well you know cops got another cop story for you jimmy and this one is out of canada so uh, toronto to be in um toronto period so a toronto detective is accused of harassing and sexually assaulting his subordinates over a three-year period. Now he's facing several criminal charges. In the news release issued Thursday, Toronto police said that the incidents occurred between September of 2020 and November of 2023, so three mm. years, over three years, right? Uh, um, investigators said that a detective employed with the Toronto Police Service committed acts of workplace harassment sexual harassment, and sexual assault against other members of the service who were his subordinates, alleging that he interfered with the lawful enjoyment of their workplace. Now, according to police, during one alleged altercation between a victim and this asshole, the officer assaulted a victim and then produced a weapon. 
Mm. Right. I mean, this is another cop you're doing this to. Mm-hmm. The officer who has been identified by police as 57 year old Jason Kondo was arrested on Thursday and charged with four counts of sexual assault, four counts of mischief interfering with property, one count of assault, and one count of possession of a weapon for a dangerous person. And Toronto police confirmed that Condo was assigned to the Integrated Gun and Gang Task Force and has been employed with the service for 35 years. His whole life. Just like the last story. Um, And he has been suspended with pay. Uh, I think that's a fucking vacation, but I guess if you're going down. But he's been suspended with pay as part of the requirements of the Community Safety and Policing Act of Ontario. Um, Kondo is set to appear in court, blah, 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 in, on July the 5th, basically. So 35 years, and you're doing it at least for the last three years. They got victims to come forward. These these are cops. Yeah. And it's not like he's sexually harassing somebody on a traffic stop. You're doing it in your workplace. And pull a gun on one. Yeah. yeah. Good and bad in every profession. Yeah, that's crazy as fuck. 35 years. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, definitely retirement. Yeah, yeah. Forward, you know, you, you might qualify be getting for pay, full retirement. Pay while it's investigated, but it won't be for long. I guarantee you. Yeah, gonna he's going to spend his, all that on a lawyer. Yeah, he's going to lose his, his retirement, like you said. Wow. He probably should already retire. Yeah. Well, we're going to we're gonna uh, go to Iowa. And you wouldn't think there were a lot of crazy people in Iowa. Right. I wouldn't think so anyway. A lot of corn, a lot but of there, big deer. There's at least one. And this crazy woman, when you hear what she did, it's going to blow your mind. There you go, lay it on me. After matching with a man on a dating app, an Iowa woman exchanged texts with him and arranged to meet her, meet with him at her residence. When Samaya Thomas, 18, gets cold feet, she she freaks out. She's like, eh, maybe I don't want to meet this guy. Right. She comes up with a solution for that. She calls 911 in a harebrained bid to avoid the interaction completely. Mm. She she decides she don't want to meet with this guy. Mm. So uh, Thomas lives in an Iowa City suburb, and she makes that call, and she tells police that her abusive ex-boyfriend had shown up outside her residence and was sending her threats via Snapchat to hit, punch, kick, and stab her. Huh. Thomas claimed that she had known this man for two years, and he was and she was pregnant with his baby. Right. Yep. So officers, they get all this on 911 and right. they respond to Thomas's residence and they encounter a male leaving the scene as they pull up. And they begin an in-depth investigation about the reports being made. The man gets detained by police and he explains that he began speaking with Thomas just over a week ago on a dating app. Yeah. And he even provides text messages that show that he wasn't bullshitting him. He was being honest, Mm -hmm. and he really did just meet that female. So after multiple interviews with police, Thomas finally admits she made the whole thing up. She claims she got cold feet after uh, upon meeting him and that she no longer wanted to. She fabricated her tales of abuse because she didn't think officers would help if she just said, I don't want to meet this guy anymore, and she's probably correct on that. Uh, yeah, they're not going to help her out of that. Uh, so after being read her rights, Thomas explained she pulled the 911 gambit because she just didn't want the mail there and felt that, uh, you know, police wouldn't do anything unless she made the whole freaking thing up. Mm. So she gets arrested for a false 911 call and making a fake report of an indictable offense. Now, both of those are misdemeanors. And she was released from jail or, or later in the evening after, uh, you know, basically getting her bond set. So yeah. craziness that the... And the lengths one will go to, uh-huh. but you know, the, these dating apps out there and, and I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, the, the time those cops were there and the time it took to investigate it until later on in the evening, and she admits everything else. They could have been working on other cases. Yeah. That's the thing. And, and we, we make a lot of it and we, right. but we don't know what did they not work while that was going on? Right, what, right. Or what police even, stuff did it stop somewhere? 
and a criminal is about to commit a crime that sees a cop car and it changes his mind. That happens yeah. every day. Sure. We'll, we'll never know. So it's really not a laughing matter. And it's probably one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever heard. Uh, um, yeah. 18 yeah. She is her age. So she's starting off smart in life. Yeah. Well, she's starting with off that with one. criminal history. Too. Jesus. Yeah. And that is the. Let me call the police and make up this big story because right? I don't want to meet this dude now. Exactly. Just tell him you don't want to meet him. He probably wouldn't have showed up. Yeah. Well, all true. And that's something. Like I said, it takes all kinds to make the world go around. <laughs> all right. Hey, ladies. Are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through it, premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H A P P Y M A M M O T H.com and use code RLRC. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., they have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Let's start out in Alabama, and then we're going to end in Arkansas, all right? So... Some pretty bad shit was going down. Actually, in Oklahoma, too. So an armed fugitive was one in a connection to three homicides in Oklahoma. He has been arrested in a wooded area of Arkansas, by, naturally by law enforcement. So Stacy Lee Drake, 50, 
was tracked down around 10 a.m. Thursday in Morrington, a city in north that's northwest of Little Rock, and this is according to the Arkansas State Police. Drake is the one in the connection with homicides and carjackings in Oklahoma and is wanted on other felony warrants from multiple jurisdictions with charges including aggravated robbery, carjacking, and murder, the police said. Now, investigators released an image showing Drake wearing a green shirt surrounded by law enforcement, and he was taken into custody without incident, and he's being held at the Conway County Detention Center. But check it out. This is Alabama. Drake is also wanted for the killing of a 62-year-old man in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And Arkansas State Police did not immediately respond Thursday to requests you know, from, from uh, Fox News Digital. The police said earlier that anyone who sees Drake should not approach him and should call 911 immediately. And, of course, his last known address was in Birmingham, Alabama. But the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, or the OSBI, on Wednesday had identified Drake as a person of interest in a double homicide in the city of Gans, G-A-N-S. They said deputies from the Sequoia County Sheriff's Office responded to a business on Tuesday, and when they made entry into the structure, they found an adult male and female inside. Both sustained injuries consistent with homicide. So they were dead, y'all. Uh, uh, that's what OSBI said. And whether it was, we, we don't know if it was shooting or not, or whatever. Um, and they added that a vehicle that Drake is believed to have been driving was stolen from the area, um, but that it also was recovered in that Morrington area in Arkansas where they arrested him. Then on Wednesday, Arkansas State Police said Drake is known to purchase camping gear, and all indications are he is still in the Morrington area. They said investigators believe he was armed and dangerous. The Morrison Police Department and the Conway County Sheriff's Office, Arkansas National Guard, and the Arkansas Division of Community Corrections were credited with helping in the manhunt. So they called him. Um, Thanks. That's a bad dude, right? Look at this picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he, he just, don't look like someone you want. He's, he's killing them all. That all multi states. He probably got other bodies on him, too, they don't even know about. You know? Uh, just, I don't know. Crazy. Very. Crazy, got, crazy. Got two questions for you. Uh-huh. First, do you have any tattoos? Yes, I do. I uh-huh. have one on my wrist right here, and I have one of the die flag on my shoulder. I don't have any tattoos. Yeah. No tattoos. Do you like honey buns? I've, I've eaten them from time to time. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I used to like them a lot. Yeah. I hadn't ate them maybe once a year now if if one's available. Mm-hmm. But I, I used to love them. Well, uh, I'll tell you why I asked that. If I, first of all, I don't have any tattoos. But if I ever decide to get one, I don't think it would be the one this guy has. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell you about this story. An ex-con has landed by behind bars again after striking his girlfriend in the face while arguing over honey buns. Uh. Yeah, investigators say Andre Eason, who is 47 years old and his 39-year-old victim, were in their car this past Friday when the 4 a.m. scuffle began. At the time, the couple who lived in a hotel were outside of Walmart Supercenter in St. Petersburg, Florida. And during the honey bun dispute, Eason smacked the victim in the face as caused minor redness. Eason was subsequently arrested for domestic battery, a misdemeanor, and booked into county jail and was released later that day, but ordered not to have any contact with his girlfriend for at least six months. The couple's relationship began roughly a few days after Eason was released from state prison earlier this year. Now, Eason is in descri- is described in documents as self-employed, and the convicted felon's solo practice previously included the sale of fentanyl and methamphetamine, mm-hmm. which resulted in his <laughs> jailing uh, following an undercover narcotics investigation. So his rap sheet also includes convictions for aggravated assault, theft, and disorderly intoxication. Not a, not a nice guy, right? right? So when booked into custody... Jailers noted that Eason had teardrops inked below his right eye. Usually means murder. Yep. Yep. As well as a tattoo 
of a bear claw honey bun on his chest. Right. Which may have explained why he got in a fight over him. Apparently, this dude loves him some honey Uh, buns so much that he has a honey bun. Tattooed on it. Tattooed on his chest. That's crazy as fuck. Yeah. The, the, I got a couple thoughts about that. So, you know, um, our friends, Roy, Kristen, and Kristen, Mm -hmm. right? So, the, uh, the, with Louisiana Pet Crematory and, uh, Parish Forensics. Parish Forensics, right? And Bruce Hall, Louisiana. So, I went and I gave the, um, keynote speak for, the Louisiana Coroner's Association and Death Scene Investigator Association. And Roy and the two Christians were there, and they had a booth outside the place where I was speaking. Yeah. And I got to meet them for the first time. Uh, you know, we have all gone over there and, and stuff since then. But the I was talking to Roy outside. Uh, um, I, I can't remember who had a tat, but it popped in my head. One of the first – a forensic pathologist I ever worked with was a super, super smart old man. And we were doing an autopsy and, and it was a person who died a violent death, a murder. And, and he said, we got to find a tattoo on him before we even opened the thing. He was reading the thing, gunshot went away. He said, I bet they got a tattoo. I said, what are you talking about? He said, like 90% of all people that die violent deaths, like murder and shit, mm-hmm. have at least one tattoo. Really? And so I asked, I asked oh, I Roy, I said, Roy, and I told him, and he was like, holy fuck. He said, I never even thought of that. He said, now you're going to make me go back in my head and, and you know, try to validate this, right? Yeah. And, um, and, you know, Roy, they've done, God, thousands of autopsies. And, then, in fact, it's the only place in the state of Louisiana where you can get your own independent autopsy. Right. Going. And all autopsy. the fans that message me all the time about, you know, they don't think their family member committed suicide or whatever. And, and I tell them, they get, you have the right to go get that all private autopsy sure. done, and they're going to tell you the truth. Right. I mean, the, uh, and the, the other thing I was going to say was the, um, the, uh, I, I had somebody that had a bear claw tattoo on their chest, but not a honey bun. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, but Roy, yeah, this dude was, uh, yeah, this had, dude. had a full honey bun. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, the teardrops under the eye. That's, uh, I mean, I know that from my prison days. That usually means for each each teardrop is a murder. Now I'm sure there's some assholes that get teardrops under their eyes, try to they, trying to trying play, to act, yeah, to play like the gangster, right? Uh, but so if you ever see that, you might want to be a little bit cautious. But if you need and like you did it for, with one of your pets, um, Louisiana Pet Crematory, mm-hmm. they had, they're so good, such good people. Yeah. And Roy and the two Christians, you call them, go to you know Louisiana. Uh, petcrematory.com or uh, Parish Forensics. Parish of Forensics.com, yeah. right? Or just call them. They, they, and look them up, call them underneath the Great American flag and Broussard. Great people. Look, and I do want to say that, that what made it so easy with the um, uh, process of cremation of our pet was you could do everything there. Right. Um, not only the pet cremation itself, but the, the, uh, I guess you call it, uh, urn or term. Yeah. Dollars, that yeah. we got, um, they even do like these really cool paw, paw print prints, things. Yeah. I, I know that Wendy had made, uh, so there's a, you know, you don't have to worry about going to three different places to get these keepsakes. Right, and, right. and it's all on. It's they had all a whole there. room full just for the pet stuff when mm-hmm. we were in there. And we toured the facility and, and, and blew my mind the, 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 the stuff that they had that can memorialize your pet. And then, of course, the, you know, they have on site where they were doing autopsies when we were there that day. Yeah. And, and uh, um, so they have that. And then they, and they, and they do the full burial services and have a chapel and everything else. But if we love That's them right. down to earth, they, um, you know, a lot of fun, but I guess you have to be in that business. Yeah. yeah no doubt so. about it. But anyway, uh, uh, y'all chuck them out and, that just popped in my head about this story. Yeah, very good. Uh, All right, well. It, oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say uh, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, and this is totally off script, y'all, but uh, it popped in my head, and, and uh, so I'm going to make everybody aware of it, I guess. But I've been, I've been on this kick lately with Navy SEALs yeah. and really getting into in-depth with, and I've, I've always – 
you know, I have a Navy history that goes back a long way, so right. it's always appealed to me. But uh, there's a particular podcast that I listen to that an ex Navy SEAL does that is just outstanding. And he went on Megan Kelly's uh, podcast that she has the other day, or I say the other day, it's a few months ago, but I watched it the other day. And he was talking about his life, basically. And and these Navy SEALs are are an absolute different breed of human oh, yeah. in, in a lot of ways. And when you leave that kind of life, it really any military life, and I saw this with my grandfather um, who was on a aircraft carrier for 35 years. And, you know, he'd come home six, eight months for right. uh, after being off for six or eight months, stay for three days and go right back. And then all of a sudden after 35 years, you're, you have nowhere mm-hmm. to go. You're home all the time. Right. And it freaks right. you out. Um, these guys are, are used to this adrenaline that goes along with their life. And right. when they leave it, they have a lot of issues, yeah. Yeah. a lot of issues. And this guy uh, actually decided what he wanted to do was go into some of the, t- he said, he said he remembered actually Googling the toughest places in the world for crime. And he said, I want to go, I want to go to those places and just, just see what I can get into. Right. And he, he actually Honduras at that time was mm-hmm. the number one. So he went there, he ended up, uh, <laughs> he ended up getting involved in the cocaine trade there. Really? Yeah. And, um, and was really in deep with it yeah. and got out of it. He said he talked to his parents and he said, um, one night I was on the phone with my mom and dad. And just like when I enlisted for the military, the reason I made the Navy SEALs was I didn't want to let them down. Mm-hmm. Well, all I could think was, you know, if they find me dead here in Honduras, it's going to let them down. So it, it it, something clicked and he, he's he left that life and he went back and now he's found God yeah. and, and religion. And he speaks of actually these miracles that happened over a one day time period that will just blow your mind. Yeah. Uh, so check that out. If, if you have the desire, it's on my personal Facebook page, but yeah. uh, man, it, it, just an amazing story of these three things that happened to him in a 15 minute time period wow. that totally changed his life. Crazy. But the guy's a hero. Right, I mean, right, uh, right. you know, did things the, we'll never a, know about. I had a girl uh, in high school. Um, her daddy was full time Navy. I think he didn't retire like a Lieutenant Admiral, or some shit. And she and I were real tight. Uh, um, and her parents been married like, I don't know, 30 some years. And she, you know, he, he retired after all his years of being gone. Now they, they lived in a small town. The mom raised the, the, the daughter and the son in the small town. And he would come home. Like you said, when he wasn't on the ships, yeah. uh, um, you know, the, the, when he retired, he came home. They didn't last six months. <laughs> his, his wife was like, basically, I can't stand you being here, motherfucker. Get out. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure my grandmother yeah. and grandfather went through that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd much rather point. you be out on the ship, you know. And, uh, but that's crazy. And um, you have watched the the making of buds or whatever it is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't that badass? Yeah, it is. And and yeah. incidentally, y'all, the name of that show is a Sean Ryan show. They're not yeah, paying they're, us anything yeah, to no, say no, that. No, no, no. This guy's got two million followers. But yeah. uh, if you're on YouTube, just check out one episode. Yeah, of it. you like yeah, it. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. Hey y'all, changing my wardrobe from summer to fall. It's never easy. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items I adore. Ensure my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget. And there's nothing easier than going to Quince and choosing these high quality items like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. The best part? All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, and I love that. I got the stainless steel Link Apple Watch Band 
from fifty nine ninety. It, it's heavy duty. It's awesome, and it's like a hundred dollars less than I could find anywhere else. And I also got a hundred percent organic cotton fisherman quarter zip up sweater. The color is alabaster. Man, I can't wait to wear that this fall. And Cindy got the Mongolian cashmere boat neck sweater in heather gray. And I'm tell you. These are classic pieces at a fraction of the price. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash RLRC for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash RLRC to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash RLRC. You'll thank me later. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Hey, look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi-glaze, cremini mushrooms, siapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. So interesting. Now, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. This is about, it's not, it's, I mean, it's just really, really fresh and just all kinds, bro. Yeah, you hear about like, you remember Jimmy Swaggart? Oh, now, yeah. Look, in the 80s, y'all that are not from Baton Rouge, you may have heard of him, but look, he had a whole Bible college, which is now off the of Blue Bonnet still, yeah. and all the buildings are there. He had hotels and there's just a school, the school, the, the college. Mm-hmm. I mean, and people paid tons and tons of money to come. My sister learn. actually graduated from the, the high school. Though. Really? He, oh, he, he that's had a right. private, high school is there too. That's private right. yep. K yep. through 12 school. And, and yep. then he, well, he got in trouble with, with his penis and mm-hmm. uh, like people do. And yeah, I think busted with a prostitute on airline highway and then yeah. and the prostitute ends up coming out and saying he wanted me to bring in my, you know, 12 year old daughter and shit like that. And you just, you know, never know what goes on in people's heads. Right. And you hear about this a lot, but you don't really hear about it from people that are high up in these positions of authority or famous. Well, let's tell you about a pastor of another mega church in Dallas, which is where I used to live. Farmer's branch. Well, he resigned last Tuesday, and that's two days after he admitted to inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady 35 years ago. Mm. Now, the young lady in question was 12. Oh. Yep, and the behavior, as she described it, would amount to criminal sexual abuse. Now, the now former pastor, Robert Morris of Gateway Church, was preaching to more than one hundred thousand active attendees and was once a spiritual advisor to former president Donald Trump. Now his resignation comes four days after 54 year old Cindy Clemshire went public with allegations that Moore started molesting her when she was 12 and he was 21 telling the USA today on Tuesday that she was no longer afraid. It was kissing and petting 
and not intercourse, but it was wrong. Morris 62 said Sunday in a statement to local Dallas news station, WAA dash TV. This behavior happened on several occasions over the next few years. And since that time I have walked in purity and accountability in this area. So this is what the, the pastor is saying. Y'all at first, the church was standing behind Morris, but it announced and it announced his resignation following a wave of criticism. First, mm-hmm. they stood behind, and they're like, mm, "Pretty sure that's not fucking correct, right?" Right. Uh, then, in a statement issued to members of the news media, the church's board of elders said they previously understood that Morris had an extramarital relationship with a young lady, citing the pastor's words, not. Abuse of a twelve-year-old child. So that's where they, they, you know, finally got pissed, right? Yeah. We are heartbroken and appalled by what has come to light over the past few days, and we express our deep sympathy to the victim and her family. Um, this is according to the CBS News and the NBC News statement. Now, allegations against Morris went public on Friday after Clem Schiffer shared her story with the Wart Wart, Wart that's W A R T Berg Watch a blog about sexual abuse within the church. Glim Scherr said in the blog post that she and her family met Morris at a youth revival in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when he was 20 and she was 11. Morris was a traveling evangelist with his wife, Debbie. Now, Morris would preach at Glim um I hope I'm saying her name right, C-L-E-M-I-S-I-S-H-I-R-E, Glim Shire's church on Sundays, and sometimes he Debbie and their son would stay at her family's home. She viewed him as safe and friendly, she said. Mm -hmm. Things changed on Christmas in 1982 when Morris asked the 12-year-old Clemshire to visit him in his room that night. And she thought nothing of it, she said in the post. Once in his room, she said he sexually abused her and warned her, never tell anyone about this because it will ruin everything. She said <laughs> that the abuse, yeah, right. She said the abuse continued in Oklahoma and Texas until 1987. Now, eventually, Clemshire told a good friend and her parents about the abuse, and Morris reportedly stepped down from the ministry for two years. That's, that's what she said in the blog. Even as the church released a statement, so she told her family they confronted him. He steps down for two years, but then he comes back to this mega church, mm-hmm. right? Even as the church released a statement about his resignation on Tuesday, Morris was still listed as a senior pastor on Gateway's church's website, which says he has been married to his wife, Debbie, for 44 years and has three children with her. Morris has a television program that airs in over 190 countries, and his radio program airs in more than 6,800 cities. This is according to his biography on the Gateway Church website. Now, Morris' YouTube page, which has 80,000 subscribers, includes videos with titles like Freedom Through Forgiveness and Did You Know You Were Made Perfect by God's Grace? And in a previous statement issued to that same WFAA-TV, the church said that Morris has been open and forthright about a moral failure he had over 35 years ago and that there have been no other moral a failures. Moral failure. yeah, right. In his own statement to the outlet on Sunday, Morris said that this situation was brought to light and it was confessed and repented of. I submitted myself to the elders of Shady Grove Church and the young lady's father, he said. They asked me to st- st- stop out of the ministry and receive counseling and freedom, freedom ministry, which I did. Now, in the latest statement, the church elder said that we regret that we did not have the information that we now have. And for the sake of the victim, we are thankful this situation has been exposed. We know many have been affected by this. We understand that you are hurting, and we are very sorry. It is our prayer that in time... And healing for all those affected can occur. And just crazy story, right? Worse. The, and it goes on and on and on and on, y'all. But the, um, the let me say this, the, the worst kind to me of, of sexual predators are ones in positions of authority yep. like that. A yep. church, yep. a police officer, yep. a teacher, he, he, he trusted former, positions. Former, uh, spiritual advisor to a president. Yeah. And, and, and any, any, 
any of those. When you're a tr- you're in a position of trust that a a parent would put their daughter or their son in your in your trust, right? Um, and you violate that trust in such a disgusting way like yeah. that sickens me. That yeah. is as bad as yeah. a murderer. Hey, to me. and and you know that statement he said, "Don't tell him one." It would ruin everything, right? I've had that in so many cases. And it's usually right after they have their orgasm. They feel that immediate guilt. And right. they're like, oh, don't tell anyone. Uh, they, you know what? Let me go on for just a little bit more, okay? Because the you would think, like, this guy, if he's doing it with a 12-year-old girl or making out with her or whatever in 35 or 40, however fucking long it is, you'd think he had stopped, right? Yeah. Mm, well, maybe he didn't. Let's check this out. So... Uh, before Morse's resignation on Tuesday, that's when he basically lied and told the board, yeah, I stepped out of my marriage, but they didn't say it was 12-year-old, right? Um, but anyway, before his resignation on Tuesday, Clemshire told the USA Today that she was disappointed that they're basically lying and minimizing the crime. And the, the, now, while the USA Today does not typically name victims of sexual abuse, but Clemshire said it was important to her that her name be out there, right? She said that she has been sharing her story for decades with leadership in very large and high-profile churches and organizations, but no one took Morris out of the ministry or from the pulpit. Clem Sheriff decided to come forward publicly to encourage others who may be victims to tell their story, she said. Any and all victims come forward. I just don't believe that I'm the only person, she said, and I don't believe that either. At 54 years old, Clemshire says she has a different confidence and a different understanding that no longer makes her feel intimidated. Props for her. The courage is there, she said. I just couldn't stay silent anymore. And, you know, uh, she says she has no shame. I've always just trusted that God's time would take it wherever it needed to go, she said about Morris. She said, why hide and it still goes on and on and on and on. There was multiple articles on it, but we'll stop it with that. Yeah. So if you are a victim of anyone, bring it forward. Yeah. I had, I had a call from a lifer last week about um, her daughter. No, it was her. She had been uh, molested and raped by this dude and, and her sister when she was way younger. Now she's found – they hadn't talked in all these years, and she found – other family members that live in Alaska and Florida who are now come, willing to come forward and they're going to bring charges against the state. And I told her, I, I mean, people don't know all the people I talk to and try to help every day. Yeah. And she was asking my opinion and everything. I said, the first thing you need to do is write. She, naturally, she was all jacked up and she was like kind of all over the place. I'm like, no, 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 slow, rein it in. You need to write down in detail. And then you just send it to me and I'll give you further advice. But you, if you go in like this, the way you are to me now, they, they're going to say, you're crazy. Yeah. And, and she said, well, my brother and them are always saying I'm crazy. But so prayers for him and anybody else, you know, come forward, tell. Are there statute of limitations? Yes, on there are. And, and that's and a problem. Going on the criminal side. And so, but people, their states are trying to change that. And they have to. Louisiana changed it from, God, I can't remember what it was, but it was the, due to the Catholic Church scandal. Because mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the people that were coming forward had been like, 40, 50 yeah, years. I think yeah. it ended at 20 something. Um, and they said so there has been legislation to change that. I know it varies from state to state, but I don't know. Well, and, and I think there, uh, while there's criminal statutes, I don't know. I think civilly they're a little more Civil, lenient, it's, but it's not that much more. Is the, it? Um, the, and, and again, with the church scandals here, the they you weren't even supposed to be able to sue because it had been passed so long, but they were still doing it, and I, I think they got maybe you know I don't know the uh, the settlements to, to make it go away. Even though they brought it to court, church brings them to court and says this is past statute of limitations. Even in a civil suit, they, there's nothing here. You have to dismiss this. Yeah. But then the lawyers put it in the news media, and they're like, mm, we need this to go away. Yeah. So, wow. Unfortunate, crazy world, but y'all yeah. report it. And, and you know, watch, it's always, there's people in position, not always, it was preferential and situational, but the preferential is the most common one, and they groom their victims, and it could be your family best friend. That's right. 
All right. That's pretty That's fucking depressing, got. but there you go. Um, yeah. But it's pretty positive and uplifting, too. That's right. That's and right. I, I guess that's it. I don't think I have anything else. All right. Well, until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. I'm Woody Everton. Your host of Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Peace. Growing your business can mean big-time logistical questions, like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then, drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com.